hello youtube welcome back to my channel so in today's tutorial we're going to go ahead and actually learn to deploy our project to heroku so uh, this is the deployed project when it's deployed on heroku finally we have something like this so this is a project when it's running locally and this is the project when it's deployed to heroku so we can just do everything as we did we can do locally so if i go to first slash docs uh let me just type out that properly so docs i can get go ahead and get the doc documentation part just like as you can do on the when it's running locally we can just go to docs and then we can get the documentation part so you can see this is a live one which is on the internet so you can just copy this URL and just get the live version of this application so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to show how to deploy the local one to a live the heroku application so that anyone on the internet can access your api and do stuff with it so we're going to be use, uh, using heroku to deploy this some of you ask that i do i do the same thing using digital ocean i haven't yet considered doing that but i will let you know and i'll release the video one once i'm done doing that but for now we'll just go ahead and learn to deploy this on heroku so great let's get started with so i'm just going to close this up for now and this is the local one which is learning uh, locally on uh, local host at port 8000 for slash talks okay so let's get to it so i'm just going to go ahead and open up my uh, visual studio code so you can see the application running right here so i'm just going to go ahead and actually exit out so once this exit i'm going to play the terminal uh, let me make this bigger for you guys so that you guys can see and i'm going to go ahead and activate uh, open up my favorite text editor which is going to be visual studio code so feel free to use any editor that you're comfortable using so once my VS code is open up, you can simply get ahead and start uh, doing what you want to do in this tutorial. So the first you're going to go ahead and do, you're going to create a GitHub, a GitHub repository, and then you're going to create a G Git ignore file and all that requirement. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually minimize all of this. So I'm going to go ahead and create actually a, Git, a GitHub, uh, GitHub, uh, GitHub repository on our local machine. So you need to have GitHub installed. If you don't have, sorry, you need to have Git installed on your local machine. Uh, if you don't have it, it's actually easy. You can just do a quick, a quick Google search to install uh, Git on your local machine. I already have git installed so I also assume that you guys already have git installed and you have the basic knowledge of how to use git so this I'm not going to go ahead and actually explain the little details of using github and so on so I'm just going to a git uh, init here and it's going to go ahead and create a github repository repository on our local machine so you can see we have initiated a, an empty github repository so I'm also going to go ahead and create a simple git ignore file so you can actually do this in vs code or you can do this in the terminal if you want so I'm just going to do it in the terminal I'm going to create a simple file called touch I'm going to say touch and enter this kind of this file is going to be called dot uh, git uh, ignore so it's going to be a dot git, git ignore file and you can also op do the same thing just by using VS, vs code you can just create a file here and just call the file dot git ignore so once you're done doing that let me just close these other ones we don't need them for now so just close these other ones okay so once you're done you are done doing that you can see the git ignore file right here and you can open it up right now it's empty so we need to ignore a couple of things right we need to ignore our virtual environment because we don't push this to github repository so to, uh, to do this actually very simple we can just go ahead and get there is this website called git ignore and we can use this website to get uh, a, a, a a, a bunch of a, 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 a git ignore template basically and it contains all the things that you're supposed to ignore as a, as a python developer and it it's, can be used for many languages as well so you can say git uh, ignore so just type in git ignore and dot io and just press enter so it's going to open up the git uh, git ignore io uh, website and this is a website you can get different uh, git ignore templates okay so in this case we want a python specific one so there are different versions like for javascript for react and so on. so yeah i'm just going to go ahead and type in python okay i'm going to type in just python type in here python and just click on create so it's going to create for us this so i'm just going to hit ctrl c to select all of this and then ctrl c to copy this or ctrl c to select all of this and then ctrl c to copy this or ctrl a to select all of it and then ctrl v uh, ctrl a to select ctrl v to ctrl a to select everything ctrl c to copy and then i'm going to use ctrl v here to simply paste all that content inside of my git ignore file uh let's uh, and once this content is here is pasted inside of this yeah and once the content is pasted inside of you have this all of it so you can see if you go up you have the v e and v uh, the vnv file so you just scroll you can see we have the vnv file it's somewhere around here so even if i don't find it trust me it's going to be in there so it's going to help us to ignore our virtual environment and not push it into uh, our git environment so yeah that is going to take care of that so if you look here closely you can find that v e and v file being ignored okay so i'm just i'm not going to waste time just uh going to say so it's actually here so you can see we are going to ignore this vnv file because uh, it's our virtual environment right so under the environment section we have the evnv file being ignored because we want to push this into production so great so once we have this done i also want to go ahead and create a requirements.txt file so i'm just going to go ahead and create a requirements.txt file so i'm just going to say uh pip uh pip freeze and then i want to say uh the arrow key and then i'm going to push this into requirements 
so requirements so you have to name it to be, to be exactly requirements uh, requirements.txt file so we're going to create a requirements.txt file and then you're going to push everything into our requirements.txt file so i'm just going to press enter and it's going to go ahead and uh, create a requirement.txt file which, can, which is going to contain all the python libraries that you have installed in our virtual environment so this makes sure that when you push it into heroku or we push it into git or anybody wants to clone a repository the person can simply uh, install all the all the libraries inside of uh, the, the requirement.txt file and that will help him to uh, run the, your project locally without having to worry about which dependency you used and all other stuff so i'm just going to close this for now and i'm going to go into vs code and if i open this you can see we have all our requirements txt first we have fast api uh, motor all the things that we installed uh, fast api mail all the things that we installed are all inside of the requirement.txt file so great so once we have that uh, that done i'm going to go ahead and create a simple uh i'm going to go ahead and create a simple uh, proc file in here so i'm going to create a new file and it, the file is going to have, going to be called proc uh, file okay so we have to call it exactly proc file the, with a capital p and everything else lower okay so you can, after you create it you can find it has this heroku logo on it so it, that's how you can create a proc file and this proc file must be within your root directory okay so make sure that it's your root directory and it has the same naming convention that i use okay so it must have well the same naming convention word for word or later for later so instead of this proc file, I'm simply going to go ahead and simply add some stuff in here. So this is going to just help Heroku to know how to deploy our app. So I'm going to say uvcon, so web, and I'm going to say uvcon. And uvcon is the server that you're going to use to run our application, right? So I'm going to say uvcon, they're going to say API. So referring to this API, and you're going to say dot main, right? And you're going to say uh, main, and you're going to say the app, just like they used to run this in the terminal right and you're going to specify hy hyphen hyphen and you're going to say hyphen hyphen host the host is going to be equals to 0 0.0.0.0, 0 .0. okay you're going to accept uh, any uh, any uh, address to run this okay and then you're going to specify the port so by default heroku provides us a, as a uh, provides us a port that is used to run this so we can accept uh, that port in the following way so we're going to say this uh, uh we're going to say actually dollar sign dollar sign uh, dollar sign this way and you're going to use the curly braces and in here we're going to type in the port okay and this is the variable that uh, Heroku provides us by default so we're going, to, we're going to accept whatever port that Heroku provides us with if Heroku doesn't provide us with any port then you're going to run on default port uh, at 5000 so that's how you can specify a default port okay so Heroku is going to provide us a port and in here just going to accept and use that port in case uh, Heroku doesn't provide us a port you're going to default to port, uh, port 5000 by default yeah so that's all basically what we need to do uh, to, in, to create inside of our proc file so just to say web uh, colon space uvcon uh, space api dot main colon uh, app right which is that we used to run it in the terminal and then hyphen hyphen host equals to 0 0.0.0.0.0, 0 .0 and then space and then hyphen hyphen port equals to dollar sign curly braces capital port right port in capital caps and then colon and then hyphen and then port 5000 so this is a default uh, a default port that we we'll use when heroku doesn't provide us a port but if heroku provides a port which heroku does typically you're going to accept you're going to uh, accept that port and use that port instead so that's all we need to create instead of our proc file okay so i'm going to go ahead so now that you have created our proc file, I'm simply going to go ahead and go into my terminal. So instead of my terminal, I need to log inside of my Heroku application. So uh, to try to, to log into Heroku CLI. So uh, the first thing you need to do is I'm also you also need a bit of knowledge of how Heroku works. If you don't, then don't worry. I'm just going to explain to you. So you need to create a Heroku application. So you can see that the application that I'm running, uh, the blog I deployed it on this application. So you need to go ahead and totally create your own application. Just go to Heroku and create a simple Heroku account. And once you create that account, also make sure that you install Heroku CLI on your local machine. So you can just Google Heroku CLI and uh, install it because uh, this is going to be different from operating oper operating system to operating system. And uh, you, many of guys who are watching this video maybe are probably on Windows, MacBook. I'm using Linux or, or something else on Linux. So I can go ahead and show you all this on different operating systems. So just go ahead and search how to install Heroku CLI. And once you have your Heroku CLI installed and you have a Heroku account created, now go inside of your terminal and do the following. So in here I'm just going to type in Heroku heroku uh login just like that and press enter so this is going to go ahead and log me into heroku just, so just in a second heroku is going to pop up uh, is going to give us an option for us to be able to open heroku inside of our browser and then click on the login button so once that's done we're going to be logged in into instead of our heroku okay so my heroku is kind of a bit outdated and so don't worry about that so you can see heroku press uh, it says that heroku press any key to open the browser to log in so i'm just going to press enter okay press q if you want to quit 
so i'm just going to press enter and this is going to go ahead and open uh the, the browser and it's going to give us a simple button to click and which is going to log us in and once you are logged in you can simply go ahead and create a heroku application and simply push this uh, uh our code to heroku okay so make sure that you have the git uh you make sure that you have the git the the requirements.txt file created and also the proc file if you don't then this is not going to work for you so once uh, the, the the browser has opened i'm just going to click on login so once the login is created it's going to prompt me that i'm you can see i'm logged in so great so if i go back inside of my terminal you can see i'm logged in as coding shark 206 at gmail.com so that's my email that i used to create my heroku account and that shows that i'm logging i'm logged in so once i'm logged in i'm simply going to go ahead and create a single heroku application and to do that is very simple i'm just going to say uh heroku so heroku and then i'm going to say create and then this is going to be the name of the app so the name of the app that you're going to be create must be grob globally unique meaning that uh no ap other application in the world must have that name okay so i'm going to say test uh, i'm going to say test block and i'm going to say version 2 a test block api and we say version 2 okay test block api version 2 and then just going to go ahead and press enter so that is going to go ahead and create for us a heroku uh heroku uh, heroku project so once it's done you can see we have it created here so you can actually copy this and this is, you can actually copy this and paste it in this instead of your terminal and that should open that so i'm going to simply uh control c and copy and i'm going to go inside of my browser and then simply uh, paste it uh control v in here and simply press enter so right now uh, nothing is deployed on this so you can see we just have this page so now we need to go ahead and actually uh, so just welcome to heroku app blah blah, blah refer to documentation and all that information so great so now you have our heroku application create uh, our heroku project uh, app created now let's go ahead and actually um you can if you, if you want to get more information about creating a heroku app you can just go here to create and then hyphen hyphen help and that should give you the whole option of creating an app and you can see we have all this option and all this stuff in here so you can just read about it in case you uh, you, are, you are you have an issue okay so i'm just going to go ahead and clear the terminal for now so once we have the heroku app created let's go ahead and actually push this to uh push this to, to heroku so i'm just going to say git add and i'm going to say git add and i'm going to simply say dot or you can say hyphen hyphen all and this is going to press enter and this is going to go ahead and add all of your of your updates into instead of, instead of requirement.txt file sorry instead of a uh, github local github repository and it's going to ignore everything instead of a uh, uh, vnv file so our vnv file will be pushed into our git repository so once we have that done i'm simply going to go ahead and simply uh do a git add git commit so git add and then i'm going to do a git commit uh git commit and i'm going to do i'm going to say a message and this will be to say uh you can say first uh commit okay first commit just like that and simply press enter and this is going to go ahead and push all our code into our local uh heroku uh sorry our github repository so once i have that done i'm just going to go ahead and clear my terminal so great so once we have that done i'm simply going to go ahead and simply do a uh, push this to heroku so i'm going to say git uh push uh heroku uh master okay heroku uh master heroku i think is master or main so let me just say uh, heroku master so i can just say heroku master and then just press enter and it's going to push our code to heroku so once you create a heroku application it's going to go ahead and actually create a simple uh heroku repository inside of your app uh, application called heroku master so it's going to push that into heroku master so once it's done you just it's going to go ahead and find the requirements.txt file and it's going to go ahead and install everything all the libraries instead of a requirement.txt file and once this is done it's going to push the thing to heroku our uh, application to heroku and we can now access it from there but i can assure you that this is not going to work because uh, we haven't set up our environment variables and uh, all of those things okay because even dot env files are going to be ignored so if you look at our git ignore file and uh, you can see that even the dot env files are also going to be ignored so dot env files are also going to be ignored so our env environment variables are not yet on heroku so if you run our application uh it's we're going to run into an error so let's see what is done so it's, it's already deployed so let's just uh, copy this and uh, i'm just going to read control c and copy so once it's done it's deployed to heroku master so now once i'm done, this is done i'm just going to go ahead and try to refresh this page so i can assure you that this isn't going to work because we are missing something so uh it's going to give us an error so how do you go up about fixing this error and doing all that so you can actually do a heroku uh, master log information you can see it's taking long to open that shows that there is an issue okay so i'm just going to exit this for now uh so if you need to take a long time to open that shows that there is an issue so i'm just going to go ahead and clear this okay so i'm just going to do a heroku um 
logs and then you can do hyphen hyphen help to see the log information so hyphen hyphen help and let's see the log log information that we get so we get all this log information okay so we're going to go ahead and actually uh uh, get the log information and then you can check the information for a different app so if you log you can just get uh, read this about the log so you can just show heroku logs and let's see so you can say heroku uh heroku uh heroku logs so heroku logs and then you can just say dash t to get the tail okay dash t and then let's run that and let's see what information we get out to get the log of why the application crashed or failed to open so you can see we have this uh, environment variable right mail username all these environment variables and they are not present so you can see we don't have that environment variable uh present so that's why the application is crashing so great so i'm just gonna exit out of this for now and then clear the terminal so we need to go back into our heroku application our heroku dashboard so i'm going to refresh this for now and you can see the other uh, the other app that we just created should pop up just here okay so once this is loaded up you can just we see the other app today we can just open it up and once you open it up you need to set up our environment variables here as well so you can see this is the information of the app so let's go ahead and actually set up our environment variables. so i'm going to go into settings so click on settings under settings i'm going to scroll down and then go into uh, reveal config variables conf uh, config variables so you can here you can set our secret uh, environment variables so just go ahead and actually go inside of your env file and then copy all the environment variables uh, inside there and then paste them in here so this will be their key and their values so, for example we have the one for mail so you can say uh, mail uh, underscore pass i think uh, let me just check it here uh, instead of uh, here so it says mills username so i'm just going to uh, copy that and go inside of my uh, v uh, my heroku app and then simply paste it in here and then now it's with the mail username that you use <coughs> excuse me so we're going to go simply go ahead and just make a replica of what device instead of our env file okay so i'm just going to go ahead and do that and then from there i'll, I'll come back to this so once you have added all your uh, information inside of our our simple uh created all our environment variable so this is going to be the key and then the value the key and then the value so once you have done all of that is all done so i'm just going to go ahead and simply exit out of this okay so uh, i'm just going to go ahead and exit out of this i don't want you guys to see this yeah so once that is done uh, let's go ahead and actually try to re relaunch our heroku application and let's see how it works so i'm just going to go into the terminal and i'm just going to clear the terminal for now so Control l to clear and windows is just going to be uh, CL, uh, clear, uh, clls and uh, yeah that's going to be for windows if you're on uh, uh, i think macbook is just clear even on linux is going to be clear okay the clear command so once we have that i'm simply going to go ahead and simply restart our application to so to restart our application let's say heroku uh, i'm going to say heroku uh, ps and then uh, let's let's say heroku uh, ps and then i can just simply do hyphen hyphen help to see what options i have so i want to go and simply restart our heroku app because for for those changes to pick up you have to simply restart our heroku uh, application so heroku ps and then hyphen hyphen help and that should pop up just in a second so it's taking a bit too long okay we have that information right here so we want to restart our application or we want to restart what we call dino so there's i think there's a service on heroku so let's go ahead and actually restart so we're going to use this command right here so i'm going to say uh, heroku so heroku uh P heroku ps and then I, I colon restart okay just like that so i'm just going to go ahead and restart my application right here so this is going to go ahead and start re re restart our, uh, our application so once it's restarted let's go ahead and see if it's going to work so i'm going to go back in here and then let's try to refresh this and see if it works yeah so you can see now the application loads successfully so let's try to go into the first slash uh, docs and then let's see what we get so if you go to first slash docs and uh, you can see now it's loading so application now is deployed successfully on heroku yeah so great so everything works as expected and uh, yeah so that's basically how you can deploy a simple application to heroku so everything works as we expected to so great so uh, you can also do a heroku uh, logs and you can check heroku uh, heroku logs and then dash t uh, to get the tail just to get the tail information and let's see if you have any uh, issues in here just to check uh, just to confirm if you have any issues so um yeah you can see now everything is running the application is started and everything works as expected so great so that's how you can deploy a simple heroku application so you can also do heroku uh, uh heroku apps and then you can say the name uh, info so you can say info uh, info and then the name of your application which is called test uh, blog 
API uh, version 2 and then version 2 and then simply press enter and that should give us the information about the application that we deploy so you can see the dinos where it's running the owner the region that is running in the 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 URL for the website the the blog application that is deployed and all that information so great we have all that information set up so great that's how you can deploy a simple application to Heroku so if you guys enjoyed it so far uh, leave a comment in the comment section below like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this so thanks for, for watching and uh, see you in the next one keep safe